This is the Elwin channel where you get a closer look at our different philosophies regarding life and design. If we study Japanese art, we see a man who is undoubtedly wise, philosophic, and intelligent who spends his time doing what? He studies a single blade of grass. Vincent van Gogh. Here's our first fact of the day. Japanese arts are undoubtedly marked by surrealism. They never fancy the real and at face value type images because for them it's all about expressing the inner self onto the canvas. Second fact of the day experts suggest that the first ever people to practice a natural dyeing technique were those from the New Stone Age era or the Neolithic period. Third interesting fact. The oldest Japanese subject of arts and crafts was Japanese porcelain and pottery. They have been successful for millennia, and their ceramics even go back to the Neolithic period. This is our fourth and last installment of our natural dye series, which is all about the Dorozome mud dye technique from Amami Oshima, a Japanese island located in the southwest of Japan. The term Dorozome literally refers to the words mud dyeing. Dorozome has been practiced most traditionally for the purpose of making incredibly rich dyes that are black for the use of silk kimono fabrics. The term Dorozome can be a bit of a misnomer, however, and that's because the fabric isn't actually dyed or colored with the mud pigment itself, but rather the iron infused mud acts as a reactive chemical known as a mordant, which fastens the colors onto the fabric. The actual dyeing that takes place is by the sharimbai wood that has been freshly cut down. The sharimbai is an evergreen plant deriving from the rose family, otherwise known as the Yedo Japanese hawthorn. The sharimbai wood is always used fresh, meaning that the wood pieces absolutely have to remain green with fresh sap. Next, the logs are cut down and broken prior to being compiled into a large net or cage of sorts that is levered up high in the air. So, what's the point of hanging up in midair, you ask? Well, the entire batch is soon brought down into a large heated vessel that is filled with water. And this is where the waiting period takes place. The pieces of sharing by wood stay immersed in here for many days so as to obtain the earthy colored tannins that are required for mud dyeing in the first place. Finally, this extracted earthy red liquid is finally ready to use. Although the Amami Oshima mud dye creates a remarkable range of browns, tans, and earth tones, it is often used to make truly saturated blacks, particularly for silk textiles. By the way, this process is not for the faint of heart or for the impatient, because in order to achieve this rich black dye, the silk has to be dipped in the sharimbai liquid a few dozens of times, followed by the same repeated pattern again and again and again, along with multiple immersions in the mud itself. The amazing thing here is that since the sharimbai colorant is so acidic, it has to be balanced out with another acid for it to react with the product of ferric oxide found inside the mud. And this, my friends, is what causes the chemical reaction that the craft master is trying to achieve for the blackest natural dye, which is utilized in luxurious items like the Japanese kimono. It's important to note that this craft is quickly fading away from our society, though. So, why is this significant? Why should it matter to any of us? There just aren't enough naturally hand dyed products out there anymore. Not only would this provide a way to pass down such a beautiful heritage from generation to generation, but it would also allow this gorgeous natural mud dye to keep on giving to color enthusiasts. Not everyone wants to wear synthetic dyes, and as such, we must fiercely preserve this cultural tradition. We hope you enjoyed this informative video. Please let us know in the comments how you think we should preserve this wonderful craft of Dorozome dye. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe for more upcoming videos.